Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let us stand the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. We'll read verse 22 to 24. Genesis 3, 22 to 24. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden a cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, just uh, show kindness to your neighbor. You are sitting next to the kindest person in this church. kindness. <laughs> Just look at their smile, you understand now. They are the MEC kindness. Last year they won awards for the best smile ever. And you can tell. Just look at them. <laughs> Good morning. Are you blessed? Amen. They are blessed and highly favored. When you read, when you meet those believers, by the way, the Bible says, "Abba, if I look down, how do you enjoy the watching bus segile footing your overflow?" Amen. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you today in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming to church today. Celebrate with us the the Passover. And we also want to thank the Lord for my friend, Pastor Franklin. Thank you for coming, sir. Amen. Are you okay? God bless you. I only have colored friends. So you want to be my friend? Bleach. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Amen. Give us a second. Away, Gazi. Away, 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 away. <laughs> we are going to have the Holy Communion today. But I have a lot of thoughts that I want to share with you around the matter. One of them being, we could be healed by partaking in the Holy Communion. When we read the scriptures, of course, we will find that it's an ordinance that was uh, established on reality, on the fact that man had sinned, and since man sinned, calamity befell him. We became broke. The first thing that happened is when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, God evicted him. He was homeless. Adam was homeless. He he no longer had paradise at his disposal. And um, the next thing we know, he, beca he began to deteriorate. And was, later on, sickness and disease were part of man's life. And since then, we, we look back and we can see how much it has progressed, how much poverty. The days that we're living in are so desperate. Here, this is bad, I promise you. We live in the baddest times ever in the history of humankind. Man is struggling. You know, some time ago I was, uh, I happened to live in an area where we have the pests. Only some pests called, uh, I call them pests, also to their food. 
ni Hyrax. Hyrax Pila. Mbila. Akisubu ngakasubu ndandi Mbila. Mbila. Ya, ngachangani Mbila. Oh, okay, great. So in Winchester Hills they have actually taken over our houses. We paying rent and taxes for them. They are forceful and all kinds of base you never get to see in the township. It's like a wild place. Sometimes when things get so bad and in our backyard there are those trees that berries we found them there. But now we, I, love, I love trees. I nurtured them and they're just next to our kitchen door. Berries that um, they come and they eat and they do everything. And I'm reminded of the words of Jesus when he said, look at the birds of the air that they do not work, they don't toil, yet your father feeds them. And I'm looking at nature in particular. Man is at the top of the struggles of life. Man. Those animals, they know the times. They would come seasonally. They know when these berries are ripe and they come and they feed on them. They don't care about load shedding. Birds are still living their original life up to now. They find water from somehow. They hustle water when it's raining. They get water from our taps. They get, they get wherever there's a body of water, they get there. They're multiplying. They, um, you should see them sometimes. See, we, we laugh with joy. You see? Some of them, they come and they sit on the wall next door and watch TV. I know you will not believe me. But they would come there and streamline on the wall next to our lounge and go like this. Goodness, you know, like, I mean, they're enjoying their best life ever. But men, even after the redemption, men continues to struggle. Those are provided for, they have no bills to pay. No shedding does not bother them. They go to bed at dusk, at dusk and wake up at dawn. They are well taken care of. When the berries are there, they come in. When berries are not there, they live somewhere. They, they, their lives are so much in order, but the master has fallen. And the master is still struggling, and he refuses to go to the foot of the cross. His redemption is. It is said in the book of Genesis, Mudimu said, he put an angel there to guard the way back to the tree of life because man believes in something we call self-redemption. You know, have you heard the term, of course? Or no, go, and, go and redeem yourself. Or somebody comes, your husband annoyed you, and he comes back in the evening, about a, uh, I, I brought a little sacrifice, an offering for self-redemption. That can be done, but not so with your sins. Man has been re, re, rejecting God for as long as he's been around. So I wish today just to draw you back to, to where you lost it. And I hope that by the time we live here today after having the Holy Communion, a lot of you would be restored. You'll be restored with your relationship to God. Your health will begin to be restored. Your, your life in jail will be under new construction. And that things will get better by the day. But let me share my thoughts with you. One of them goes like, it is said that men became separated from God by simply breaking one law. And yet he continues to live without God by simply again rejecting the only one solution. There's not too much, mom's work. God doesn't expect her to do a lot. It is like the words when God said to Cain after he killed Abel, and if you do right, will you not be accepted? He gave him language examination time. God gave him the scandal. I look, dude. If you come back and do it right, I'll accept you. One soul. The only solution he rejected it. Ended up killing a man. Ended up causing this and that. Man does not want God to tell him what to do. 
Man wants God to leave him to think on how to do it. Now, I'm afraid because we have, you tell, we have appliances in our homes in Jogo that are not necessarily self-repairing. A lot of them. But man believes he can self-repair. And it's been now 6,000 years, man has been struggling with repairing himself. And he fails dismally. The more he does it, the more life drives him to the traffic lights, to the rubbish dump, to everywhere else except to the palace where God is waiting for him. And now that, that kind of rejection does not hurt God. You see, if God, Cynthia, if God was hurt, would be hurt, God would one day just decide, in this, especially now, just to press the reset button. But the fact that still, the sun still rises and still goes down, it tells Hori, your stubbornness does not piss off God at all. Because his heart has been hardened. He's saying, let them do as they please. We will see them on judgment day. They do everything else except what he wants. And since the day Adam sinned, man has been trying to redeem himself. But then God said, from the day he sinned, for if he tries, he's going to fail. And I know he's going to go back. He's going to use logic. And that's why salvation doesn't have to make sense. Because logically speaking, Adam was going to go back there to the same tree and try to reverse what he did by whatever method he would think. And the Lord said he would live like that for, because that was the tree of life. Which means he would live like that and become unredeemable for all his life. There would be no need to even try to bring a solution because the methods he was going to use were going to drive him away from God more and more. And for him to have been evicted was for his own good. For Nakungi, you know, we should allow the Lord's chaste, ch chastening. The Lord will chasten those he loves. The Lord punishes. The Lord re 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 reprimands, rebukes those he loves. The Lord allows those he loves to go through some tough times so their senses could come back, then he can redeem them. We, we know, every parent knows, some of the gadgets we take away from their kids and they think we are the most hateful parents ever. Especially during exam time. How about I'm X box and Y box and Z, Z box? What, all the boxes, when you take them back from them and then they go like, he's the cruelest parent ever. We ask, please, come here. Your child can't, can't cope anymore over an, an Xbox. The teachers will say, what is it? Well, no, I just took the Xbox, but no. These are not the results. It, but it, it's more than this. That's when man begins to reject chastisement. He becomes a witch doctor. He becomes a witch. He becomes everything else except that what wants him to be. He knows that the spiritual realm exists, but he keeps jumping in the wrong pool. He knows he needs to communicate somehow, but he, he always dials the wrong number. And unfortunately, I've ever noticed it. Well, tell her, each time you dial the wrong number, yeah, Arabi, try that with your cell phone number. My number felt like at one, two, you know, just share one, two, five, six. Yeah, four, one, seven, two, zero, one, five. Yeah, dial one, eight, two, four, one, seven, two, zero, one, six. What's the pendulum? Always the wrong number goes in. I don't know why. You press the right number every time. The number you have dialed is not available. Press the wrong number. Always. Somebody says like, Hello. And man keeps that in this wrong number all the time. And unfortunately, the line tab and the, the devil's lines are always open. There's no load shedding in hell. There's no, no signal in hell. Their signal is the sharpest. Because you know what? The devil is fishing. He never goes to sleep. You miss God. You will fall into the wrong hands. You don't want God slay queen. I promise you. Selling out your zingel. 
Oh Lord. And just like a person who, who is drowning needs a lifesaver, every sinner needs a redeemer. And when you're drowning, you don't choose who saves your life. You drowned by yourself. Therefore, you cannot prescribe. Oh, the lifesaver must be at least 1.7 way so much. You are drowning. Accept it, the lifesaver that is provided. That's what wise people do. And the world is drowning in sin. Man is drowning in sin. I promise you, even the poorest man feeds his dog. Are you aware that even your dog lives a better life than you? Because it's always, pro no matter how tough times are, you always give it something. Your dog doesn't know about your, snu your struggles. Because it has been called, it has been created by God to live a better life. Because they're still living within the confines of their relationship and the contract with God. Birds sing every morning. They just sing. They're looking up. They, they change the menu every time. If you take a good Friday, the male bird might take the, 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 the family to McDonald's and they are going to come back having tasted McDonald's. You don't have to go to that far. But I'm here to say to you salvation is not a scam, it's a reality. As a scam salvation, irreal. You're sitting next to a person who can tell you how real God has been, how faithful he has been, how dependable he has been. Somebody in this place knows the goodness of law of the Lord to the fullest. They have tasted the goodness of the Lord. Each time we're going to talk about sin or error, two words will come into the discussion. Redemption and atonement. In Christian theology, Redemption can only be achieved through the atonement. And this is how we ended up with Jesus being the sacrifice. I'll repeat that again. In Christian theology, I must say in Christian theology, the atonement only came, the redemption can only be obtained through atonement. There must be a, an atonement in order to bring redemption. And this is how Jesus came into the picture. Finish and last. The company you work for was started by two brothers. You can't ask why four, five, six, seven. Just work. Yeah, a person goes there. They, 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 they told the history of the company. Oh, Johnson & Johnson, for example. It's a family company. Whether you like it or not. If you don't like the concept of family, buy something else. Go to China City. You'll get John & John. Or so on and so on. In life, we are accepted as a, the natural and it's a real advantage because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians, my favorite scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. If you want to put any writing on my, on my, on my tombstone, Ungole MVK, Ungole Bra MVK, Bra, Dot, Bra MVK, Worry, 1 Corinthians 15 46. How be the, the, the natural, the spiritual did not come first. But the natural. We accept things easily in the natural because we confined to the natural, because we fight in the natural. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to the Lord, to the pulling down. They are not natural as such. But we are confined to the natural, we compete in the natural, we beg in the natural, we make goals in the natural, we, we, we will go for interviews, we put everything in the natural, we exclude the spiritual so much that when the spiritual comes up, and we realize that the natural is just a threshold. Get steps. The natural is a threshold. There's the spiritual. The natural is the threshold into the spiritual. You have to come out from the natural to climb into the threshold that leads you into the spiritual. 
And the day the spirituality doesn't make sense anymore, you have to descend back to the natural. And that is why today people confine their lives to right down there where they can never even taste the, the life here up here with the Lord. When the Bible says, John, when he was called by the angel, he ever said to him, come up here. If you're going to go, see the spiritual. If you're going to see the things the Lord is doing, come, just come up here a little bit. Just, just come up and see in the realm of the spirit. Whether I was in the body or also, I don't know. But all I know that I was drawn up to glory on that day. God is not going, going to, 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 to excuse himself for allowing you, uh, uh, for, 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 for being a spiritual being and you not wanting to seek him. Because when you become a sangoma, also indiscriminately, you, you begin to realize and you know who the spiritual is real. How come you can't do the same while you are clean, while you are nicely twisted, while you are smelling good, while you are in charge? Do you still have to wear a skin of an animal on you and have a, a bracelet, a matlalo, and everything else for God to talk to you? No. I mean, the subscription, the communication with God was paid in full. The data is unkept and the line is always open. But men who stubborn. You can tell her that they still know there is God. And Okay, let's go on. Oh, Lord, help your people. So each time we talk about sin or error, two words, redemption and atonement. And I said to you, in Christian theology, redemption can only be achieved through the atonement. And this is how we ended up with Jesus being in the picture. Your president, Kirama Posa, Hawaki Shawelo, He's a vendor boy. You can't reject him because he's a vendor boy. I want a president I'm sued to South Africa. Well, if you want a Musutu president, migrate to Lesotho. Then you'll have some peace because then you have one of your own. And unfortunately, Jesus is not vendor, he's not Swana, he's nothing. If you, can, if, if you cannot accept him because of his nationality, go to where you will be saved. It is foolish to reject a man, especially because of his ethnicity or, 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 or nationality. Bus drivers are not an a, 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 a ethnic group. Taxi drivers are not. The man who sue up the jersey for you is not your ethnic group. You don't, accept, you don't reject them because you benefit from them. Look, Jesus, in the same way he will have impact in your life. He had to come. He had to come from some nation somewhere. And he represents all humanity. Otherwise, it's a man who will suit. I'm I I don't know where else because the whole Africa is now democratic. I say quick trans guy. This is kind of I say. You get my point? But in the natural, we cool. Yes, I have to friend. Yes, I have to tell you. I'm telling you, the taxi driver will speak in Zulu. Where is his own vision? Because there is. No, Patala. You understand? Say something. It doesn't have to be from your own nation.
Tevu, u u sebeta satane ka re satane ke motswana le yena. We need to wake up from all this nonsense. So, redemption means to save or to deliver one from sin and its consequences. That's redemption. Atonement is the process by which people remove obstacles to their reconciliation with God. In this case, sacrifices were used. Understand like that? In this case, when, 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 when redemption, where redemption was involved, it can only be achieved. Uh, redemption can only uh, re redemption is to save or deliver one from sin and its consequences. But now, to, 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 in order for redemption to take, to take place fully, atonement must be done. You can never only be delivered from sin without a sacrifice. And that is why, okay, fine, go away. The traffic officers, it's a form of atonement. You have sinned. So to atone yourself, you pay a fine. And you can never say, I want one day you are going to be owing 20,000 rands in atonement fees. But I can understand a bit of a boozer. You get the point? But now, when, when, we, when we are in the natural, we understand these things. We, we know. Today, we were talking, let me make sure I saw Hey, man, I saw somewhere last night in my social media or in the or a car that he told they are going to be uh, finally done away with. And I'm saying to Joy, you see, I wonder what's going to happen to us who paid because they can't just say, I'm sorry. No. They cannot. Sorry, you paid. No. So if you are a lawyer, you can get your, get, get, dust your gown. You're going to be quite busy. Because we paid atonement for going through them. Now that the atonement has no longer value, let the goats and the sheep and the cows and the chickens come back alive. Because we are atoning ourselves. Or get Romeo one colota. So redemption to save or to deliver one from sin and its consequences, but atonement is the process by which people remove the obstacles. Because the minute you sin, then there's an obstacle between God. Look, you offend your parent. This, yeah, let me give you a good example. You spoke wrongly with your father in the morning. Your mother overheard you. You come back in the afternoon, you say to your mother, hey, I'm, I'm sorry I spoke not well with daddy this morning. Already, you, you, you've seen the need for, for redemption. Then your mother says, you know what, the best way is when daddy comes home, you know he likes tea, and you know how he likes. You boil the tea back with the milk in the microwave. Just Then you pour a little water. Then she, she, say, she says, make this tea the best you know how. Then take the tea as an atonement. Say, Father, sorry for talking bad to you. Now, when he looks at you, he looks at you through a cup of tea. That was Jesus. You said, I'm sorry, but the, the, the sacrifice. But so I understand. Ask every devil worshiper. Ask every heathen. That's if they ever answer, of course. So in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve stood no chance against the devil's cunningness. And they were left totally desperate and destitute. And then verse 21, yeah, Genesis chapter number 3, let's go to it. 
It says then the Lord God made garments of skin. They, they, were, they were already talking about the issue. Adam, why? Okay, the wife you gave me, blah, 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 and everything else. Then God said, okay, fine, look, look, guys, I sort out. out. Then he, the God Lord made garments of skin for Adam and Eve, his wife, and clothed them. But let's look at it professional today. When God clothed men, he gave him the best ever leather. But that was a sacred leather came from an animal, which means God made a sacrifice somewhere for Adam and Eve, an atonement. They wore the atonement. Though this atonement from the skins of animals and blood of bulls and cows could not cover, could, could not remove man's sin forever. This was not a t full a time a atonement. This was just a covering until a perfect, perfect sacrifice would come. But what that? Until some but like goats and cows and everything, they don't even know why they are dying. That is why they do not have the power to save the sinner. So God had to bring somebody who will know why am I dying. That's why when he was in the garden, he nearly changed his mind. He said, Father, if it is possible, can this cup pass away? Because for the first time he stood there as Jesus, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And he saw the the seriousness of the task. Are, this, this cannot be done. I, 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 I cannot go through that for men. But he said that, Lord, Father, let your will be done and not mine. Goats cannot do it. You want to kill a goat at any time for your sin? No problem. You don't say anything. And as a matter of fact, goat you kill, even you eat of it. How do you actually do that? Someone who has power to redeem you, you cannot eat. Unless he says so. You draw a picture now, honey. She's sorry. Now, this is my body. I give you permission. Good, I've seen you killing doves and later on going to the altar, scraping the ashes because this was the only dove left. The ceremony is over. As soon as the ceremony is over, but then they would go get the scraps from the altar and eat. She just said, Now, look, you have to understand. No matter how much you kill and eat and enjoy, the forgiveness will not be there until I, the sacrifice that will sit on the table with you and say, see, now I'm dying for your sins. For all have seen them come short from, of the glory of God. See that? Are you okay? So we need, we need to understand what Mudimu, Mudimu means business with our atonement altogether. So it says here, and God made for them, for Adam and Eve, clothes from an animal skin. I wrote at my margin there that it was a sign that an animal was just sacrificed, but not for the total removal of sin. Any, any kind of blood. I, I don't care what you're doing, 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 you Magazi yao hasa na mata. Kuyangizo mtu mnyama. Amagazi ezi mbuzi. Awa sena mata. Amagazi ezi mbuzi. Ayangiana nje AK-18 la se Avalon. But they will never go beyond that. For them to go beyond that, there must be an empty grave where somebody went in, conquered death, and came out and went back to Thomas and said, Thomas, you said you want to put your fingers here. Touch me. It is me. The one who said I was dead and now I'm alive. And I'm alive forevermore. And I hold the keys to the kingdom of darkness. The keys to hell. And I'm giving unto you these keys, Peter. As upon this rock I'll build my church. And you have the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Anything you loosen shall be loosened. Mbuzi can never say that. You could slaughter your whole crawl. And you stop listening to people. That's why the Paul, I think, it's in the book of Colossians and Galatians. Galatians, he says the law was just our schoolmaster who led us to Christ. Now that Christ has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. 
So don't be taken back to sub A by a witch doctor. Muje sorry next se ke lekse ke tsa PhD jo anunje ke tsa PhD. Aka tlela ntho tsa di sub A. Ora ha imo Bibleing ne swantse be kai. The Bible is an open book comrade. It speaks about both those who made it, those who never made it, the laws that God put together from the book of Genesis to 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 revive. Who put Adam sinned in the era in the in the in the era ya 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 innocence. When Adam sinned it was the the era ya innocence. Now God had to bring him uh, build the 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 the, 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 the consciousness ya ya man to to know right from wrong. Remember he said now man has become like one of us. Now he knows good and evil. Now we must teach him how to reject the evil and to go with good. And all those laws and everything, the laws that Paul says were schoolmaster, they were put there to train men to walk in obedience to God. Until Christ came, as man was going and slaughtering and slaughtering, Isaiah says the blood of bulls could not even justify or satisfy the righteous requirements of the law. As he was slaughtering and slaughtering, one morning he woke up and boom, there was the final sacrifice he went past them and john was standing with the sons of the jews and as he was passing he said to them behold the lamb of god which take that you know that just shook them because of, these were jewish people they knew lambs their fathers sacrificed lambs in egypt on the passover night And that's why God had to do the Passover yamachuta to coincide with Jesus Passover final sacrifice. That night they had a lot a lot on their plate. He pointed at the man we sons of Jews we know sacrifice we know lambs and everything else. Their fathers knew the lambs which covered up their sins. until the final sacrifice had come now listen to this sacrifices of animals and everything else were like a bail no upatala who pays you felach the sacrifice that jesus did was the this court finds you not guilty That was Jesus. But then Jesus would say, "Go and sin no more." Because he who keeps sinning, Paul says, he who keeps sinning again and again and again, it's like he's keep sacrificing him again. But I got to get get in second nature I'm to you. Or no, you sin, you get a sacrifice. So people are going to take advantage of um, uh, and I, I normally call them the forgiveness vouchers. You know, they said, Lord, how much? How many times must we forgive? Seventy times seven, seven times seven. I don't know. Seven. He made it even much better. One and about like seven times seven. Yes, ara eh seven. Ne banana like forty nine. Aru four ninety. But you know we we asked a good question. Ne banana suto baru chon na we mutosa la tsuarelo. I call them the, and then now we take advantage of that. Each time it's a typical example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly how people would actually keep sacrificing and sacrificing, sacrificing, sacrificing. But if you, some of you, I'm, I'm, I want to be honest with you. In two months, King, King, Kirmo, April, yeah, next month, the beginning is 66. Now, second I'll write your Waska Tower Hall at 66. Don't worry, I know I look 16. But I'm actually 65 and the 10 months. Hey, ooh! <laughs> I know what I'm saying. When I talk about uh, when people leave, and yours is to keep throwing the vouchers of forgiveness. Some of you have already done 490. So if you did. So now, 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 now,
I'm, I'm telling you, if you're going to look at that and just forget about the redemption, the redemption, the, 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 the redemption and the atonement that Jesus did, he would say, go and sin no more. Because in the presence of sin, there is the absence of God. And in the absence of God, there is the absence of the presence of God. In the absence of the presence, there is the absence of God's timing. In the absence of God's timing, there is the absence of the goodness of the Lord. And now the children of God would actually walk with God, cashing in on the voucher. Sorry, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. When are you going to actually come face to face with the grace of God? Where you grow once and for all. Mudimu bata rehula mazala. So in the in the in Genesis three twenty one, in this instance, the atonement was temporarily because it was just sins covered up. So we train him until we look for the proper sacrifice to come. And the sacrifice that must be done, the atonement must come from his own loins. Because see, it's generational. Man must finally come to God's consciousness and walk with God that close, that God could deposit a seed in him. So man must give birth to that which was going to save him. Something that's going to cleanse up to his genes and everything. The pudding is a whole new world. And now, you know, this, uh, that's a, this is a side thing. I can't have anything against them. Maybe get something. You know, what I get something. Comrade, you can't have a wish doctor, and I'm the same man. Seventeen. And I was told to buy Jose too. He said I must buy one completely you know to find a totally black chicken, Kisa. Not unless you go to the panel bitter shop. Ureke white by spray. I promise you. She said to me, one completely white chicken, one completely black. White was easy. You know, they need someone. They cream white. You know, they need to fail. cream white. But at least they were born white. Hey, black was a problem as a one. Keep a killer who is black. Keep a bad guy. Give up. Guy, make a fool man. Now, at the back of your mind, you, you are a 17 year old, you grew up in a family where such things were not done. Then you go there and you imagine, hey, you look at the car, you know, you know, you imagine, you know, 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 you I went there. Who have my mind? My mind hardly exists. My mind hardly, hardly exists in my mind. Went to my mind, then I went there, then this man, he slaughtered the chicken. Quick! I shang sasi kwa na panda, bashaba kipa matumbu. Then I started staring the whole thing and putting some things up. He brought the whole thing. What he gave him was. I knew what he I promise you. What I thought long and hard. 
Koko matumbu. But I said, okay, fine. It's another world. It's another world. I don't know. Then I went like Koko. At the initial and I don't remember what I said. But I was all like, okay, fine. So, but I'm still hopeful. We finished. Then she said, he said, that's all. I promise you, my greatest word was two chickens. Oh, I will work it. I mean, I came back and I was like asking questions. So this man, if he needs chickens, he tells people in our community, that was that's something I want to throw, you know. But it, 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 it woke me up. I, I grew up in a Christian family. But in the absence of the father, you hustle, also, also, you, people tell you, some seven, you go to high, you know, you become like, you know, you, you're brought up by the streets. But then I, I came back and I thought, oh, Lord, this doesn't work. You know that? It's worse than I imagined. It's worse than I imagined. Now, I thought, if I'm going to have to be protected this way, oh, no ways. That's why when they said to me, Jesus can save you. When they said that, Jesus can save you. So let me give it a try. I found out it was not just salvation. It was redemption paid by the atonement. That you will never ever Sin that used to control you, you will never ever be enslaved to it ever again. Not only was I saved, not only was I atoned for, but I was redeemed from the curse of the law. Because the Bible says, cursed is everyone who hung on the tree. So that the blessings of Abraham, listen, might come upon the Gentiles. Not his own people. Check out Ramaphosa Ali Patala Lilu Nabu Khunwawatwan. Did the Gentiles move in? But the gun number Gentiles Bahol. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith. In the same way that you enjoy the pension from somebody from Limpompo, accept Jesus' atonement. He's from heaven. He was just delivered, packaged and delivered in Israel. And that's it. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 10, 4, 4 and 5 quickly, Hebrews 10 chapter 4, chapter 10 verse 4 and 5, it says, For or because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So, okay, let's ask ourselves, why then were they offered? Because the law was the schoolmaster that taught us the laws of redemption and atonement from sub A all the way until we became high school students and understood. What about one plus one, two plus two, three plus? We're leading you to becoming a mathematician, Kopilikwali. We're leading you to become a scientist. You get the point? Amen. So it says, uh, because it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins, therefore when Christ came into the world, he said, the sacrifices and offerings you did not desire. They did nothing between God except to your conscience only. After you sacrificed, you felt forgiven and you would walk again. For some people who were poor enough and could not afford a yearly sacrifice, that would keep them from sinning. If you are so poor and you had no two, two coins to rub together, you would know if I sin here, come sacrifice time, I will not have. So you would actually abstain because you knew I don't have the payment. So sacrifice and offering is not desire, but a body you prepared for me. 
Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you had prepared for me. This is how the sacrifice of Jesus came into the picture. Look, whether you believe it or not, what happened on the cross has impact of you, on you. Just like what happens in parliament has impact on you. Because they see you. So you cannot deny the laws of the spirit when you are so good at the laws of the flesh. You are just on the, the threshold of getting to, into the spirituality. What's made up there will have impact on us down here. And I can promise you now, like I said, next to you is seated somebody who knows exactly, whose heart keeps saying amen, amen. It resonates with somebody who knows where the Lord took them from. So I have no doubt. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. When I Remember what the Lord has done. I will never go back anymore. Keep up, what's the bang? This thing, they know they were redeemed right, right in the middle of Africa. Without having been there, without seeing the grave, without walking the Holy Land, but because God is omnipresent, salvation reached them through the preaching of the word, and their hearts were pricked, and they said, What must we do to be saved? And today, the city there say, I am so saved. Believe it or not, there are people who are unsaved right in the, in the Holy Land. You didn't have to be there to be saved. Sin this is a corner. When it comes to redemption, there is no such thing as redeeming yourself. You cannot. You can, Maruleka, you can redeem yourself when you have sinned against your wife by bringing flowers or something she needs. Or rather, I can sorry for that and then. You have been redeemed. You brought the atonement. The one you sinned against has accepted the sacrifice. Now when I have to pay for my redemption, go high. Get like a whole nut. Just feed it. easy hand. I wonder if there's chocolate in Swaziland. I doubt. Whole nut fell and je kupele yonkinto. Not a box, just one one thing. You're not here, you are near fellow pelil. You be a fellow. More poison, what you call the poison corner, where we put all things that make us bad. You can have more poison corner there. That's all. When it comes to redemption, there is no such thing as redeeming yourself. With this, we see this especially when it comes to needing healing. We are unable to heal ourselves. No matter how strict you are with your health, one day it may be bypassed and you realize or all the things you know, all the routine you do to keep healthy will not redeem you from the disease. Then you need a redeemer. And that is why on those appliances, body microwave ovens and a number of other things, there's a sticker at the back which read, there are no user serviceable parts inside. And the sticker is written, warranty broken if the sticker is removed. You temper with the sticker, that's it. Because there are no user serviceable parts 
inside. Ibu akawena. I know you just you, you need God nje. Umhlolo kaNkulunkulu nje. He's created you. Put a stick at the back. Not do not open. Do not temper. When faulty, bring back to the manufacturer. Bring it back to the manufacturer. We will see what to do with it. But we go 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 remove sticker. Finished. In 1 Peter 2:24 says he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree so that we might die to sins so we must be dead to the sinful nature you get the point Dead means unable to satisfy any of the requirements of anything. So that no matter how appealing sin may be, we we'll look at it and we we'll say, "Dude, I can't. I, I, I was I can't. Really, I want. I want. It means I can if I want to, but I want. But I can't means I'm disabled. I don't know how to sin anymore." He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been what? Healed. So with this redemption and atonement, everything that went wrong from the eviction, from the poverty, from the lack and want, from the fear, from the struggles that befall ordinary men, from curses that were laid upon your family by anyone dead or alive the introduction and the entrance of Jesus into our lives brings healing healing from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet because what you know what you become God's property altogether with redemption redemption is payment with redemption comes ownership you were bought at a price you were not yes you are not your own now live to satisfy he who bought you if god could actually have found 10 men in sodom and gomorrah would have been saved how many christians are there in this city You know that what the problem is? Righteousness. We there, but how many are righteous? Hi. Kiba wa 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 mfundisi. Baba ti. Mo kombe mina so le tri kombe. They think they think there are some philosophers. That's stupidity. U kombe mina so le tri kombe we na mfan. Abu shumba kwa ti hi. Slay mundo tani. I think slay miliona is quite. Uh, uh, contextual or relative a foolish man is not universally foolish he's he's, he's smart in some in some areas but the, the, there's a saying here for as long as a, a man keeps quiet he will appear intelligent it's not about good you come back so or go so or go so that's immaterial the reason why Adam and God uh, Abraham and God had to part ways and the two angels had to spend the night at Lot's house right in the sin in the midst of a sinful nation was because there were not enough righteous people they was a male properly for go to his abroad if God could only find one man righteous by the name of Noah and he saved him so can men save aka thola monna o iwan ha le hutso o different aka fa mona monna o iwan ha smela fa lo different aka mona mona monna o iwan ha ma upa fela aka pholo sa bophelo ba bobe bonolo le mjeba o 
Chakam. Yababa na different. But pillar under the redemption and the atonement of the blood of Jesus. And the children, when they are born, would be carried into the presence of God. Not into some dark room somewhere. They'll be carried in the presence of God and presented. Here is another one of the redeemed of the Lord. Here's another one atoned. Here's another one with a mark your chest on their forehead. Here's another soldier, Mudim, which will one say, bear the arms in the kingdom of God. Here's another future preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's another defender of the church. Here is another righteous man. And Mudim, you will make him to cross paths with a spouse which comes from the other side of the, of the scarlet line. Some of them run at Jesus. If you can find one man you know, as Apollos are familiar now from familiar now her multiplier but but then the devil doesn't give up on men. I said to you some time ago the plan of the devil is just like it's not foolproof you can tell her the devil wants to have as many of God's images with him on the wrong side on the day of judgment. He knows God as a soft spot for people. And that is why Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. But the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and that you may have it in abundance. Abundant life does not mean no war. Abundant life means going to war knowing the results already. Because the war is fixed. The referee has been paid. You see that? When you are from your corner and the devil hits you, do, and you are there, the referee grows like half, one, one and a half. Two, two and a half, three, you're up. But when I'm out to do certain hour, the reverie goes at two, four, six, eight, ten, finished. Oh. And no correspondence shall be entered with the final. The decision is final because the referee is Jesus. We're having abundant life. We fight, but we know the fighting is formality. We carry our arms when they left Egypt. They were heavily armed, but they never lifted a spear. God fought for them. May God fight for people in this place today. May God show himself strong on the behalf of some men in this place who have been struggling and struggling with employment for as long as we can remember. God will remove the shame so you can feed your family. He will open up doors that no man can close. Could you just prepare now? We're going to have the Holy Communion. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you're worthy. Flows to the lowest valley, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, from day to day. You will never lose its power, for it reaches 
For you can reach us to, to the, the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that is now. The blood that keeps me straight from day to day. Oh, I'm day to day. From day to day. children of Israel were in Egypt, uh, there was a night called the Passover. That was the night they had to celebrate what we called Passover, but that day they were going to go free. God had ordered Moses to tell them to take a lamb which is going to be sufficient for the family. If the family would be too big for the lamb, then they would have to share with some other people so that everyone, both those who had and those who did not have, would be covered. And he said to them, you smear your doorpost because... Uh, The angel of the Lord was going to go through Egypt that night. And every firstborn of the Egyptians, every power, remember the firstborn in, in every nation, the firstborn is the strength of the family. This is the child who has established the family. So when God says, I will strike the firstborns, that are the Egyptians, he was saying, I'm going to strike the very core of your bondage. What, what the devil thought, this was chains for you. He said to the Israels, I will destroy. And it was after that, when every firstborn was struck dead, Area both men and animals that the Egyptians said, You can go. Now, behind the Holy Communion, 
There is that. After this whole Egypt, Egypt thing, they ended up commemorating it with a, that at the back of their mind. For each time we partake of this in the wilderness, each time we partake of this in our families, each time we partake of this until Jesus comes. That's why Jesus said, you will celebrate this until I come. It simply means being free from that which the devil thought you will die with or you will die from. And we see one of they left Egypt. He said to them, this blood shall be for you as a sign on the houses where you live. And when I see this blood, I will pass over you. That's how it got to be called the Passover. For the angel of death would be coming through the land of Egypt. So the smearing of the blood on the doorpost, more who do love and love him. More they redeemed. So otherwise, the angel of the Lord would slay throughout. Now, what's amazing is somewhere in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, when Israelites left Egypt, some people left with them, which means some Egyptians part in the Passover. After they have, and probably some of them could have been firstborns. When they saw that, they just had it, Libona, to live with the Israelites when they left. That's the impact of the Passover. So I'm trying to say to you today, Today, take that which has been standing before you. Go to this thorn in the flesh. This is something that never gives you rest. This is something that is forever standing in your way. This is one thing that keeps reminding you that I'm boss over your life. You're partaking of the Holy Communion, the symbols. So the blood and the body of Jesus, the symbols of the lamb that was slain in Egypt. And tonight, heaven, this, even, this afternoon, this morning rather, heaven is reminded of what happened many years ago. And there will be a sign of relief. Today they are going to be healed. That I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be delivered. The curse will be broken. The stigma will be taken away. Doors will be opened for me. Rejection will no longer be part of my portion. We're going to prosper as a family. We're going to come out of this. God has made a way. And it will be evident. But then there is something else. If you still believe in other sacrifices, there's going to be a conflict. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, a man has to examine himself. Because this will be a clash of kingdoms. Man is not totally free to save himself. Even the freest people are subject to some kingdom. You can never serve God and mammon at the same time or serve God and anything else at the same time. This is the covenant, the mother of all covenants. This is the greatest covenant man can ever have. It comes with the redemption from our sins and the atonement totally. When God looks at us, he sees us as if we have never sinned before. And the chains that we're binding were and the family will be broken in Jesus' name. Shall we stand? I would like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. In the meantime, just flip the top part off and take out the wafer, which is a symbol of the bread. So we'll read from 1 Corinthians 11 from 23. 
all the way to 29. This is Paul, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. That Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said to his disciples, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant. See what the word covenant means? We bound to a new law. Every other law that was not supposed to be our masters is broken. Every other master you used to serve is no longer has power over you. Or this is the cup of a new covenant. In my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Why the Lord's death? Because it was through his death that we found life. It was through his death that we were free today. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lamb. And that is why in this church we have the Holy Communion once per annum. One, it, is, it is this one step per annum where everybody is in, in, in the right slot. Otherwise, it says if people get used to Holy Communion, they end up dropping dead. They end up just eating damnation to themselves because it, it ends up really just another ritual they can abuse as and when they want. Well, it's different strokes for different folks. This is why we, the Bible says, be sure that you know the condition of your flock. That's why we don't want our church people to get used to the Holy Communion. They must know it means it. It's a real thing. Well, let's leave that out. Therefore, whoever eats and brings and drinks Whoever is this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. So I would like to say to you today, take a moment. Nobody knows you better than yourself. Make right with God. Not for the sake of partaking. Make right with God as a way of beginning a new life with God. Then you can partake of the Holy Communion. Otherwise, it could open up gaps in a person's life. That the affliction is unnecessary. It's self-explanatory. If you take it unworthily, you take in judgment, you take in damnation upon us. It could actually weaken you rather than strengthen you or do the purpose for which it was meant because it's a covenant. Just take a moment and talk to God. We thank you, Lord. We come before you this morning, that Demudimu. Our hearts are broken in your presence. We come with contrite spirits. We come with attitudes, Murana Mudimu. Sabat Watsabang, who they are not supermen, but people who need forgiveness from you. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. But as we are about to take this communion, we realize, Lord, how many years ago to the children of Israel while they were in Egypt, it was a matter of life and death. Those who never took part, their kids were killed the same night, every firstborn. To those who took part in it, their salvation was secured. Up to a point that we believe that some Egyptians took part and they were saved. Today we thank you, Lord Almighty, for this congregation shall be saved too. They shall be strengthened, they shall be healed, they shall be redeemed. 
Your sins shall be forgiven as they are standing before you with broken hearts and they are asking you, Lord, to cleanse them. Not only so that they can partake, but so that they can live right in your presence. We thank you that you forgive all sins. And today we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that not one of these, your people, after having spoken to you, will leave this place as they came. But we believe today there's an open door before them. No one will be able to stand before them all the days of their lives. No sickness and disease will dominate them. From today, they shall begin to become stronger, even stronger than a unicorn, for they've been anointed with fresh oil. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Bless your name, O God. So we have one confession for the Holy Communion, for the, for the bread. Could you give us that confession, please? And then wax one will be for the, for the Jews. Take the bread in one hand. Go after me. Lord Jesus, I take this bread in remembrance of the sacrifice you became and about what you did for me on the cross of Calvary. By dying for every sickness and disease that will ever come upon me. I believe that by eating this bread, which is a symbol of your body, I am receiving my total healing. Let us eat. Be careful when you pop this, it's too small. If it spills to the ground. Confession, there we too. As I drink from this cup, I affirm that my sins have been washed away. By your blood on the cross of Calvary, and that I have total victory over sin and the works of darkness. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Amen. Shall we drink? And may God show kindness to you. May he make all your requests come to pass. May he look after you and your children, even their children in an unborn generation that is still coming after you. May he make your enemies your footstool. May God change and swap the roles that whosoever had you underpinned on the ground should find you, having risen through the grace of God. May you be healed and healthy all the days of your life. God bless you and keep you. And God make his face to shine upon you. And may he give you favor all your life. Could you pass the cup, pass the cup to your right. From wherever you are, pass it to the right. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let us thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.